The key factors to consider with lifetime extension is that we will only extend a lifetime if it's safe to do so. So that's where research plays a huge part in understanding the materials' behaviours and how they degrade over time and how they behave in different environments so that we can safely extend the lifetime of nuclear power plants. Typically, when we refer to nuclear materials, we're talking about fissionable materials, so that's nuclear fuel like uranium. But nuclear materials can also include stuff like the, the vessel materials, cladding. So this varies from concrete all the way to different types of stainless steels, which is where a lot of my research is based. The reactors that we built in the 70s are coming to the end of a lot of the components' lifetimes. So we have spent a lot of work researching ways to extend their life in Bristol with PDF over the last 15 years and we've been very successful in that so the lifetimes of the AGR fleet has been extended by about 15 years from what it was originally envisaged. The key components of a nuclear reactor starting with a fuel so that would be uranium uh, or uranium dioxide uh, arranged into rods. There's also the moderator which slows neutrons so in an AGR it's graphite there's the coolant, which takes away the thermal energy, and then there's also control rods. So those are lowered to control the rate of reactions. They can also be dropped if we want to stop the reaction entirely. Here at the University of Bristol, I study the degradation of materials in extreme environments. Inside a nuclear reactor, the materials there ex experience a really extreme environment. Um, it can be anywhere from 300 to 550 degrees C. The materials we use inside a reactor change as we use them and so that starts really, really small. So it starts on the scale of atoms and those atoms will move around and change and over time that builds up into something that might cause a crack or a failure of a component. And we use advanced microscopy to see those tiny little changes and understand how they become those larger challenges. So when it all comes together, we perform materials testing from the centimetre scale all the way down to the nanometer scale, which is seven orders of magnitude in difference. So that's the equivalent of comparing me walking to the coffee shop from work or walking to the moon. We have over 20 million pounds worth of equipment that we use to, to study nuclear materials. We also have uh, experts in, in the analysis of those materials. So one of the more significant findings we've had in our research is using the machine behind me, the High Speed Atomic Force Microscope, to watch cracks grow in real time uh, under a corrosive environment. And this is really important for understanding how they form, both within the reactor and also in the nuclear waste when it's being stored afterwards. That had never been done before, to see that crack as it, as it grows and work out not just what it looks like afterwards, but to actually see how it's progressed in real time. The research performed here generates new understanding on mechanisms such as corrosion and the materials properties of the materials used in nuclear power plants, which in turn en enables the safe lifetime extension of nuclear power plants, which contributes to our net zero targets. The nuclear industry, companies like EDF, draw on the research that we do here at the University of Bristol to justify the lifetime extension of their reactors. And so our work has helped to extend the advanced gas called reactor fleet by anywhere from sort of 10 to 15 years, which is a really significant time for that electricity production to continue.